All praise is due to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the Lord and sustainer of the universe. I beseech and implore him to forgive us our sins and our trespasses, and I offer and ask him to offer his most salient and blessed salutations upon his last and final prophet Muhammad sallallahu and all those who follow his guidance to the last day. So I'm just going to touch on some main points, I don't want to take too much time. The, the topic is too big to talk about in five minutes or five hours or in five conferences. It's something that needs to be uh, a priority in our lives actually to, to figure out and to acclimate and to wonder about the beauty of our Prophet Muhammad Wasallam. And as our dear brother said just before he introduced me, when we talk about beauty, it's not just beauty of a physical beauty, beauty of forms, but it's also beauty of values and principles, what's referred to as al-akhlaq, the inner characteristics. And so our Prophet Muhammad Wasallam was the most beautiful of all creation, is the most beautiful of all creation, in every aspect, in every way, even in his physical characteristics. When the companions describe the Prophet Wasallam's physical characteristics, they used words that seemed like hyperbole but are not hyperbole. Fakhman Mufakhama. He was great and he was made great. He was greater than the full moon on a full moon night. More beautiful than the full moon on a full moon night. This beauty of the Prophet Wasallam was something that was inescapable. But yet, there were those around him who didn't see his beauty. We didn't understand it. And I mentioned that some of us may say, I wish I lived in the time of the companions. I wish I was one of them. Then I too would be a companion. Then I too would aid the Prophet ﷺ and I would fight his wars with him and I would defend him and I would be with him and I would do all those things. And I would see his beauty right up front. But yet there were people around him who didn't see it. The closest of people to him. Abu Lahab, his own uncle. Abu Jahl, others who knew him his whole lifetime yet didn't see the beauty of Muhammad Sallallahu And the reason for this is that the faculty that recognizes true beauty is not the eyes. The eyes may aid, may be a pathway, but the true faculty is the heart. Allah says in the Quran, إِنَّهَا لَا تَعْمَلْ أَحْصَارُ لَكِنْ تَعْمَلْ قُبَلَةِ فِي السُّبُورِ It's not the eyes that are blind, but it's the heart This blindness will be a barrier to seeing the true beauty of Muhammad So then the question becomes, how can I avail myself on a personal basis of this beauty, of this goodness of Muhammad What can I do personally to avail myself of this? The Prophet ﷺ had both outer beauty and inner beauty. And we can read about these things. And we know that our relationship, don't make the mistake that you're thinking our relationship with the Prophet ﷺ ended with his end of his life on earth. It did not, because our relationship with him did not begin with his life on earth. The companion asked Jabir, the Prophet ﷺ, when were you a prophet? He said, I was a prophet and Adam was still between clay and water. He was not yet formed and fashioned. So the new, the light of prophethood was the, some of the akhbar, was the first thing that was created, the light of Muhammad ﷺ. And so all of the rest of the prophets were actually deputies of the Prophet Muhammad ﷺ. And each one of them came with the message of Tawheed, and also came with the message that there will be a messenger coming after me and his name is Ahmed or Muhammad, referring to the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu So then the question we return to it, how does one avail oneself? We could read about the biography of the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu and that is a, a good way, it's a correct way. We can read the description of the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu in the Shama'il, that is also a good way. But this Fatir, has found the closest of paths to recognizing this beauty of the Prophet Muhammad 
where we can listen to him speak and look at him and shake his hand and they, he looks at us and we look at him. The closest way I, this faqir has found is by seeking it in his heirs. The heirs of the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. The true embodiers of knowledge are the ones who are embodiers of prophetic knowledge. Prophetic knowledge. Those are the ones we seek out. And there are people in this room and there are people on this stage with us who are of these people, who are awliya wal aqtiya. Spending just a few moments with them, it's like you're spending time with the Prophet And that is the intention that we should have. How long are we going to delay what we need to do? We can speak about the many problems of the Ummah, and there are many, economical, economic and social and political and so forth. But let's address the main issue, the main problem, which resides in here. Each one of our individual hearts and our collective heart of the Ummah. And I believe that the way to remedy this situation is that we put at the top of our priority list is to cling on to the rope of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala via our awliya, via our true scholars, our true practitioners, the ones who have taken on the mantle of the Prophet sallallahu the ones who have taken on the mantle of the Ummah sallallahu alayhi wa We should seek them out, we should aid them, we should defend them, we should sacrifice for them. And first and foremost, we have to put them number one on the priority list. How long are we going to search for pleasures in life and for ease and for wealth? How long are we going to spend in life doing that? And life is short. Let us spend our life in the most important endeavor that we need to do to realize our potential, not just as Muslims, but as true human beings, true vicegerents of our father Adam, alayhi salam, the reason that we're put on this earth, to be stewards of this earth, to know God, to know his Prophet sallallahu and implement that knowledge in everything and all that we do. Alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alameen, and I apologize for taking a little bit over time. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.